Hawa. 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 We speak existence. Man, I mean, we just digging on it. Minding our business. You know what I mean? We're going uh, at the speed that we're going. I mean, how much have we learned? How much have we grown? You know, do we have to be Hebrew scholars to know the Most High's name? Do we have to be scholars of Paleo-Hebrew to comprehend existence, you know, to have what was called common sense? To be able to dig and study and show yourself approved. To come together, you know, as non-scholars and do something more scholarly than any scholars that, you know what I'm saying, we, you know, uh, you know, came across, man, coming up, man, the way that we've been connecting this all praise our creator so we know that something's going on man and and uh you know when we're edified the first thing we do is say what vibration are you edifying me in have you come to build me to build with me or to destroy and we're on this youtube you know framework man and social media you know we're in an illusion we're in a matrix Separation is absolutely necessary. When you're in an illusion, you're in a matrix, you must separate out of it. You must be a separate people to be a separate people. A Kodesh, a separate people. That is the alchemy. The pressure is put on it. The separation occurs. And remember, man, when we dig on this, we're doing our best. We're speaking through the wire of this matrix. We're speaking through this illusion to connect to the few, to a few. And only your vibration is going to be able to allow you to hear the sound, to hear the tune. Hawa, hawa, we're talking breath, we're talking vibration, we're talking framer, we're talking shaper, we're talking natural by law, man. Special appreciation, um, special appreciation to this. Wonderful, wonderful, man. Um, wow. True seeker, real one. I mean, real spillionaire, man. Uh, you know, this brother's been uh, digging for a while. Um, you know what I'm saying? I'm so grateful to, uh, I mean, I, it's, it's so much of his drops I got to still catch up to, man, because he's so in-depth with it, man. And, and he comes with such a amazing perspective and amazing tuning, man. I mean, the, the, the tuning, the vibration of the family, man, that's you know, um, you know, not just quote unquote getting it, but just searching it. They're not just getting it, but they're searching it. They're taking it a step further. You know what I'm saying? We just said, hey, why don't we start picking up this paleo? And of course, how does it connect with Hawa? How does it connect with our creator? And of course, you know, we dig through more than a, a few links. You know, of course, we we say, hey, you know, here's a, a couple of uh, <laughs> babies in the bathwater, a couple of waves to serve. But then, you know, more and more starts to um, pile up, you know what I'm saying, the, the documents, the evidence, the, the sound, the vibration, the common sense, the, the way it feels, the wow. We say, well, what do they do with this W, man? Because they seem to have a problem with it. They seem to enjoy going from this wow, this wow and the paleo. Again, we're just talking... Ancient Semitic Hebrew early. Look at the picto. And we got this vav, right? But they call it a vav in the modern. So they keep switching your W's, man. They switch your W's to V's or W's to Y's. W's to Y's. Bottom line. Yahweh is not a Hebrew name or word. Yahweh is not his name. It is an attempt to reconstruct the pronunciation of YHWH based on one, the testimony of people who didn't pronounce his name <laughs> and two, bad copies of ancient texts. The scriptures themselves testify that both Yah and Wa are shortened forms of his name. So which one is it? Because you hear them shortening it to Yah all the time. Yah, 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 right? We got the exclamation of defiance in etymology. Which we're going to get back into. Very interesting when we dig on this Eve. Because before we can uh, venture into saying. Oh this in the Paleo or the Picto is always going to represent a feminine Eve. Or something like that man. We got to get to the root. 
of it all. We got to comprehend that even when they speak of Eve, they're not speaking of destruction. They're not speaking of calamity. They're speaking of life. She who gave life, a living being. But where did the life come from? It came from Adam. So Hawa, from the Hebrew Semitic Hawa, literally a living being because she has life. But where did her life come from? She came out of Adam. So it's from the base Hawa. It's from the base. It's from Adam. What is Adam? Adam is the image. Adam is the frequency. Adam is you, so-called Negro. You are Adam. You are the image. What is an image? It's the exact frequency. It's the seed. Father to son, you pass your seed. You pass your image. You pass your Hawa. You pass your life. So they're hiding life within this, within the creator's name, within this Eve. They're saying, oh, Eve, oh, yeah, you can just pull up a doc and say, yeah, man, that must mean, it must, oh, Hawa must mean Eve. <laughs> but it's from Hawa. It's from Adam. It's from the image. It's from the base. It's from the foundation, the frequency. Hawa, he lived. So is Hawa feminine? He lived? Is Eve a he? So what frequency are we coming from in our edification? What frequency did Eve come from? She came from Hawa, from Adam, from the image, from the life as a living being. Eve came from the base. She came from Hawa. He lived. Then you can compare it to the Arabic Heya and Hayin and all that. And then when they keep giving you the Yahs, we know. And again, man, we always give love to Let Us Find the Truth, man, who dropped this great source on us, man. And uh, we get the babies out. That's it, man. We connect it. We connect it. We get the babies out. Um, that brother, you know, definitely inspired our library and all that, man. So, you know, this is... This is a building process that all we did was put together a few pieces and say, man, how can we make, you know what I'm saying, this, how can we put this in our frequency? How can we put it all in one place for, for what we're building, man? And, and the inspiration has come from you, you know what I mean? Yah. So we got the Wa and the Yah. And we're about to get to this natural by law. I'm just trying to knock some stuff out. This is, you know, a continuation of Hawa, the creator. Hawa, the breath. <laughs> Love to natural by law. So... Both what they're saying, Yah and Wa, are shortened forms of his name. So if you don't hear Wa anymore, but a baby comes out and says, Wa, Wa, not Yah, Yah. A baby comes out the mother and says, Wa, 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 not Yah, Yah, Yah. So what's natural? What's natural by law? We're talking baby talk, man. We're talking baby steps. We're talking the building blocks. We're talking the foundation. We're talking googly gaga. That is our Hebrew. That, that's the frequency. The baby comes out speaking the frequency. Wah. Not yah. Because when we dig on the yah, it is an exclamation of defiance or dismissal. So what are you dismissing? What are you in defiance of? Why were there, you know what I'm saying, when we dig on the hijack and the proxy and we get all the all the heya heya chants, we got to remember that's coming from the proxy. So with the proxy being in your frequency, screaming heya heya with the proxy being your frequency, screaming war chants as an exclamation of defiance or dismissal, war chants, exclamation of defiance or dismissal. You're not finding you in them. You're finding the breadcrumbs. They just got some babies. And you say, huh, well, should I be in your frequency or should I keep searching? Should I keep looking for the babies and get the difference between this ya and this wa? Maybe we can keep searching and getting it. When we dig on the hawa is the form found everywhere across our planet, across the plane, a place named from very ancient times in the imperative, 
it means he forms, not she forms. He molds, not she molds. Because when you deal with the he molds and you deal with your framer and your shaper, you're dealing with your mother and your father and your father molds you in a vibration. Your father molds you in a frequency which you call law. Law is vibration. Law is frequency. We're talking the giver of breath and the giver of heart. What is heart? It is your foundation. It is your frequency. What's my brother natural by law kicking? Hey, ha. The breath. Whoa. The breath, the giver of breath, framer and shaper, he molds, right? We're talking he molds, he forms, he molds. Remember, E is, let's go back to Eve. Eve. He lived. So you look up the etymology of Eve and you get he lived, not she lived, but Hawa. A living being from the base Hawa. He lived. He lived. Yah and Wa are shortened forms of his name. The Hebrew words Hey Yah and Hawa both mean the same thing. Oh, so one doesn't mean, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Destruction and chaos and, and confusion in and, and Africa and stuff. You know what I mean? It's just the same thing. Oh, but. There's a Y and a W change, you're saying. There's a Y and a Y. Are you saying that there was a hijack at some point? That at some point a hijack occurred? Because when we keep digging on this he lived and we dig on this Ya, way, we dig on this way. Reconstruction Tetragrammaton from 1869. He uh, assumption that the Tetragrammaton is the imperfective of the Hebrew verb Hawa, which is the earlier form of Heya. So we keep hearing that this is an earlier form. We keep hearing and comprehending that a Wa from a baby comes before a Ya from a baby. And we're getting the babies out of the bathwater was in the sense of the one who is existing. Hebrew verb Hawa, earlier form of Heya. Now, what does it mean? Because we're only edifying. We're only, you know what I'm saying, surfing the wave with each other. You know what I'm saying? But it's worth it, man. It's worth it to fight through it to get a pure water frequency, especially when we're dealing with existence. And when we deal with our framer and our shaper, when we deal with our mother and our father, it's so important to come back together again when we're dealing with the giver of breath and the giver of heart. Now check this out, man. This last thing, man, before we're going to get to this brother, this wonderful, powerful, wonderful brother, man. And, and love to the brother. He's right on time. Just great time. And it was just, you know, I wanted to continue anyway. And uh, he just really gave us a, a wonderful wave to surf here. So. Yeah, man, when we deal with our frame and our shaper, we're talking about the mother and the father of life and all creation, the giver of breath and the giver of heart. They who give birth and give heart to the light everlasting, the child of light born of woman and the son of light born of man. They who are compassionate and wise in all things, all that exist in the sky and on the earth and the lakes. And in the sea. When paired together, Mother Father is the title for the highly respected head of the patrilineage group or the patriarchal founder of the patrilineage. When paired together, Kuk, Kuk, Kuja, Kuja. Remember the Kajulam and, and Alom and Kajulam. All right, we're talking breath is also a metaphor for spirit. The brother's just talking breath. We're talking the hey, the haw, 
and the wa, not the vav, the wa. Now they say feather. Now check it out, feather. Over here you got the wa. They say secure, or a hook, or a tent peg. Remember the most I spread, spread out Shamayim, the heavens, like a tent for you to live in, a tent. And you put the tent peg in it, what do you get? A foundation. You get the heart of the matter. You get the foundation, the heart of the matter. You get the vibration, which is the foundation. The vibration is the law. The law giver gives the tent peg is the foundation of the tent. We're talking about foundation with the wa and with the ha, 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 wa. Ha, wa, we're talking the breath. It even says right here, look, reveal, breath. Wait, breath. The giver of breath. So in a sense, you are give you have the com you have the ultimate frequency with the framer and shaper with the framer as the breath and the giver of heart or the tent peg or the foundation or the law the shaper is the law let's go let's go let's get it like it's the first time the vibration is the law law is vibration And we're just talking shaper, shaper, and framer, framer. We're just talking setsuko, the framer. Let's get it bigger. Setsuko, the framer. Wisdom, your mother. Refers to one who makes something by putting things together. Wisdom puts it all together. A building from stone or adobe. A meal from various ingredients. Breath. Or a woven cloth from individual threads. Shaper, he molds, he shapes, he forms. Refers to one who makes something by modeling or molding pottery from clay or sculpture from carved stone. This is your law. It molds you. It's the vibration. What frequency are you in? What frequency are you edifying in? Thus giving shape to an otherwise amorphous substance. The framer and shaper are the most frequently mentioned gods involved in the creation of the world and its inhabitants. Their names imply the creation and giving involved giving frame and shape to matter that already existed rather than conjuring something out of nothing. This pair of powers, this couple, this union was so important that soon after the Spanish conquest, Father Domenico de Viso used their quiche names, their root names, to refer to the God or the power of the Old Testament. Don't put another power before your power, your mother and your father. Creator of the green earth and creator of the blue sky. Alone, cause you're long. So check, if we're talking about Hawa, the earlier form of Heya, and we're talking about he forms, he molds, or he shapes, and we're talking about Hawa, the creator, a highly prominent name is that of Hawa. It was the most ancient name for the creator and is easily identified from a Hebrew verb meaning to form or to mold or to shape. As time flowed on and the world fell apart, different people developed different names for the Father God, for the Creator, King of the Gods, and for other superhuman personalities. The myths show common patterns, but the stories and relationships among the gods vary from place to place. The tribes remembered the same general arrangement, but estrangement led to different details. Oral deterioration and later literary embellishment eroded a solid core of social memory. You fell out of memory. The Most High said, I'll take my name from you. You're putting it back. We know that Hawa, the W, they didn't throw that in to throw you off. You, you got to get that on your own. You got to find that W, man, because you got to go way back to the, to the paleo to find that W because they're going to switch it to a V or they're going to switch it to a Y. So you always going to find your paleo in the indigenous copper color and that wa 
here got nothing to do with anything feminine, does it? It has everything to do with foundation when you're talking about a tent peg. When you're talking about the tent, security, the hook, when you're talking about the feather, this feather represents the foundation. This feather rocking in this indigenous drop, this indigenous truth represented a foundation. It represented a land. It represented a covenant. This feather represented a covenant. It represented a foundation. It represented a heart, a heartbeat, a vibration. The breath and the vibration. Hawa. Hawa. So let's get it, man. I'm just, man, really excited about this wonderful drop from this brother, man. I'm going to fall back. Let it rock, man. And uh, yeah, man. Just uh, all praise the creator, you know what I'm saying, for being able to bring all this together, man. The ha and the wa. To bring the wa, the tent peg, the foundation of the tent of the house. That's your law. That feather is representing your law. And the ha, ah, the breath, ha, ah, ha. Ah. They got you on the hey. They got you later on the a, eh, which came to their e in their Yiddish. This is their spells. These are their spellings. How you get your ha, ah, and they get an e out of it. Now you get an e in the English. This ain't even English. This is Greek and Latin. You see how they switch the frequencies completely blocked out all of your frequency. Daniel already switched it from the Picto. Now you got the modern Chaldean flame letters all the way to the Greek, to the Latin. Now you got your spelling and you think that's just how it goes. Your A's and your B's are meaningless. Your D's and E's are meaningless. But did you know your E went all the way back to breath? Now you just write it as an E. So we got to be hijack free. We got to be in the right frequency, especially when we edify each other um, you know what I'm saying, on something of, of, of this amount of pure water. When you say water, you're saying wa, wa, water. Wa, wa, it's natural. It's hijack free. It has everything to do with security, securing the foundation and the breath. The breath that what? The breath that who? Oh man, we're talking the breath is also a metaphor for a spirit or that which constitutes a person's life, life, life. What are you getting with life? The one who is existing, the existing. Hawa, earlier form of Heya. Hawa, Hawa, the creator. You know what I'm saying? Then they said that people, you know, just stop. You know, just uh, stop remembering, man. The memory went out. But all these uh, areas, man, with the Hawa. Again, when you see the H-U-A, it's Hawa. You don't pronounce hey ya with the U-A. The U-A's are always there for a reason. The Hawa, Hawa. Hawa, o Hawa. Hawa, o Hawa. This is New Zealand. This is Hawaii. Hawa, Hawaii. This is Peru, Hawa ok, Okina, Hawa ok, Okaya, in Bolivia, Peru, Hawa, Hawala, Hawa, Hawaii. All right, it's all over us, man. So we're deciphering even the A, the uh, O U, the O U, Awa, Owa, Awa. All right, so. Yeah, man. Again, you got all these docs. We're going to get to this natural by law, man. You got all the drop. You even got some, uh, you know, to form, to mold, break down. Hawata. Remember Hawata and Huimak or Hawamak. Hawamak, which is the Moses connection. Hawa is the form found everywhere across the plain, a place named from very ancient times. He forms, he molds. So, then you got your breath. Hawa. Hawa. God exists, God exists. Then they put the Y on it to say, oh, okay, in the future, I shall do this and I shall do that. But if it's a Hawa, if it's the ancient name, it's the ancient name. 
they'll tell you that there's a reason to change it for a futureness of things. But again, we're only talking about the most ancient name from ancient times. And we're only talking about the breath and the feather. Without further ado, love to my family. Natural by law. Let's dig on it. I like to uh, highlight the first word we're seeing right here. Dealing with the uh, ha. Right? The ha. Now, I know it has an E with the H, and people might say hey, but uh, hey or ha, all right? And um, I just want you guys to, to dig on that because we have the symbology, right, or the letter that uh, would indicate this sound, right, right next to it to the left. And as we see right here to the right, um, it means the breath, right? So when we say ha, right, it's just simply the breath. I mean, even as um, you sit there and you say it amongst yourself, right? Simply ha, right? That's that's the breath within itself. And um, I'll leave the link, of course, in the description box. You know, for you to come across and, you know, use for yourself and review it. Um, yeah, so basically, I just wanted to highlight in its uh, most ancient, you know, original form from the Semitic hieroglyph, right, that was recovered and studied. Um, this information that was presented, this uh, ha lettering, right, or sound, is the actual letter in Paleo Hebrew, right? We're digging on the alphabet, right? So, um, yeah, ancient name, right? So this is why I like this uh, as a source. So as I was saying, <clears throat> we're digging on ha. Simply put, right, for the breath, right? Just straight up. And um, as you see, it's telling us that, you know, its definition, its meaning is breath simply. So it's simply to breathe, right? And um, below, we have what would seem as Bob, but it's not. When we're dealing with the paleo, Right? When we're dealing with the paleo, right? Like that paleo talk tongue, right? The paleo, right? The ancient, right? It's wa. And that wa sound, right? As you can see by the symbols, is backed by a feather. Now it has many different meanings, right? <clears throat> but you know, we can take away from simplicity in hieroglyph format and by ancient Hebraic lettering, right? No hijack, right? Hmm. We don't see no dots, right? We're not dealing with none of that, right? No, no, no uh, Yiddish, right? So as we see it, it says Wa, right? And it's saying that it's a feather, okay? So, um, yeah, fam, we're going to go ahead and we're going to dig on this for a bit. And uh, I hope you guys find the information, you know, informative and much hop to the tribe. Wow. Um, when we put this together, right, we have ha, wa, all right? The breath and the feather. Now, you know, dealing with this indigenous truth, right? You being a talk time, right? You dealing with that that memory source, right? As you, um, you know, basically restore your connectivity with the creator, right? He, establish, he establishes your connectivity back to the land, right? And as you start to wake up and remember as the talk time, right? As the so-called Negro, which is also the so-called Indian, right? 
as the copper colored races that was originally found here in America, right? Feather also dealt with the breath, right? Alright, so um we're gonna go ahead and dig some. So um according to Wikipedia, right? This is ha, right? Now they put hey as in like he, but we're gonna rock with the ha, right? The breath, right? The ha, right? Because this is what we're digging on, right? And um this is just for, you know, informative purposes, right? You know, for the fam to do their breakdown and have uh all round, you know, awareness, right? From my side notes that is. And um so we got ha, right? And it's um the fifth letter on, you know, the Semitic I'm assuming would be the alphabet, right? And it says that it includes the uh Phoenician the Hebrew, the Aramaic, and the uh, Syriac, right? And Arabic. It also says that um, it's a proto-Canaanite letter, right? Which gave rise to the Greek letter E, which would basically... Uh, oh, I'm sorry. From the Greek letter and the Latin letter E which would basically become the E that we use, right, as a vowel. And they said that this basically represents that vowel sound, right? So, ha, or so-called hey itself, is not a vowel, but it can be used to represent such. All right? So, um, as we see, they give us an example, right, for its origin, which is in the Northwest Semitic area. Now, um, they don't say where necessarily, as you can see, other than so-called Egyptian hieroglyphs, right? Notice there's, there's no Africa or nothing like that, right? <laughs> so, we're just going to, you know, roll with the proto-Northwest Semitic or Shemitic, right? And as you see, they have the height, the height accent to it, right? As you see it. So it further proves that in its origin, the lettering of the ha letter, is, you know, it's, it has its pronunciation in ha before hey all right i think they you know well i don't think i'm pretty sure they added that hey for the yiddish to help them you know with their pronunciation Dang. right and um as you get into various different languages and break down it switches the root of the word switches all right so it becomes or it it it, it, it goes away from the high into the hey and the, and it comes even back in Phoenician. So Phoenician being a Canaanite, right, is a copycat, mm. right? And, um, yeah, so we see right here, it says the Hasir. So even here, right, it's still the Ha as in the breath. So even when you say Ha, you can, you can feel the breath, right? Now, um, this is his function in Arabic. In Arabic, the he is also pronounced as the ha and is also used as a suffix indicating possession. Alright, so when it's indicating possession, the noun attached to the suffix belongs to a specific masculine possessor. It is also read as ah. Right? Ah, as you can see it, it's also read as ah. Now, if we remember, in the Shemitic, right, it's actually from right to left. 
Y'all see that? So, if you're attaching the ha as a suffix, right, and you're ending it in the abbreviation form, and that's if we're using the Arabic rules to the term, it's actually a masculine form of possession, Man. not feminine. Right. And that's just one of the, uh, you know, misconceptions, man. And, <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? We, we're all digging, man. We, we're all, you know what I'm saying, coming from, you know what I mean, you know, a place of just, you know, wanting to, you know, put it all out there. You know what I'm saying? We never want to, you know, try to anchor and say, hey, this is this and this is that. Oh, when whenever you see a W, this must mean feminine. <laughs> When that's just a wa is one of your Hebrew letters and that has nothing to do with being feminine. You know what I'm saying? That's just getting to the root of it all, using common sense with it. Um, you know, but this is all edification, man, you know, because we this is what gets thrown out there, you know. A lot of people say, Oh, okay, the the wa must all, you know, be, you know, this and that. And no, the wa is foundation. The wa is the foundation of the tent of the house. Wa. Uh, wow. Specific masculine possessor. Eve came from Adam. Eve came from Adam. Let me just right quick, man. Um, I almost forgot that I wanted to dig on this link that my bro, bro. <laughs> Had to hit him with the double, bro. My bro, uh, AD, man. You know what I'm saying? He's always digging, man. I meant to uh, dig on it earlier. Wow. Yeah, this link right here, man. And Abram uh, Publications has some really great, you know, it's a great, great source, man. Um, you know, this is what we did to break down. When I was breaking down my name, I said Eliakim, Eliakim, and the Q-U-M, and it gave us a great, great breakdown of rising up, you know, meaning to make a stand, to, to rise up. Wow. So, the Hebrew language knows one root of the form Heya, H-A-Y-A. All right, so you got the Heya. All right, so the Hebrew language knows one root of the form Heya and two of the form Hawa. One of the form Heya, two of the form Hawa. Or so says Ha. H-A-W, Theological Word Book of the Old Testament. The older BDB Theological Dictionary does not differentiate between the two roots. H-W-H. One of the roots, H-A-W-A, -A, Hawa, or one strand of the root, of one root, Hawa, is in fact the verb Heya in an older spelling. And the other, Hawa, is the unusual variant of the root verb Hawa. <laughs> so, Hawa is in fact the verb Heya in an older spelling. Again, again, you know. As we dig on it here, we're just talking about the ancient times. Hawa is the form found everywhere across the planet. The plain, a place name from very ancient times. Hawa, the creator. Hawa, the creator. Hawa, a highly prominent name is that of Hawa. Hawa. It was the most ancient name. For the creator and is easily identified from a Hebrew verb meaning to form or to mold. See, they forgot all about Hawa and their social memory and the distortions of ancient, scri ancient scribes and the literary accounts. We can now determine the original forms when we talk about Hawa, most ancient. Excavation sites in Israel. Hawa, the creator, is the key to the host of linguistic forms. Hawa, the ancient name for the creator. Oh, yeah. While El, a common Semitic name for God, is well remembered in the Bible. Hawa, listen up. Hawa, listen up. Hawa, 
The ancient name for the creator is not. The reason is simple. When the Israelites were given, what they're trying to put the Wah, Yahweh, right? During Exodus, the new name for the creator. So now they're trying to put their new name. And that's when we say, nah, we dodged a hijack. Because if there's an ancient name, if there's a paleo name, if there's a Ha and a Wah, that's our frequency, not a new frequency, not an excellent new tune, not a futuristic tune. Hawa. It says they learn to forget the old Hawa. So you're saying, yeah, now there's Yawa. <laughs> now they put the Y's and the V's, the Y's and the W's. They learn to forget the old Hawa. They no longer remembered Hawa. Now it's foreign to us. Now it must be only, you know, a feminine queen mother of, 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 of heaven in Africa. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying that with all love, man, because it's honestly, man, it's, it's, it's disappointing. You know what I'm saying? Because we're better than that. We're better than that when we surf this way. We're better than that when we're in this frequency. We don't have to declare war against each other when we're already at war, when we're just digging and bringing these books out and these manuscripts out. And vibing with a frequency and we're having fun. We're in a redemption frequency and it feels good. Because it feels good, we're going to keep doing it. Because it feels good, we're going to keep searching and building with our family. Because we know that we're making a difference. The emails <laughs> that I'm getting from the family across the planet, I know we're making a difference. And it feels good. Hawa. They no longer remember Hawa. It is well remembered, Hawa, the ancient name for the creator is not Hawa, the ancient name. Oh, now there's a new name. I'm rocking the ancient name. I'm rocking the earth. I'm rocking Hawa. We're talking about the breath, the spirit, the life force, the foundation, the framer, the shaper. We're talking framer. We're talking shaper. Ha, wa, breath, foundation, law, shape, ha, wa. So we dig on this uh, great doc, man. I'll leave this man from uh, AD. We're talking hawa, hawa, or one strand of the root hawa is in fact the verb heya in an older spelling, and that's why it says over here hawa is the earlier form of heya. And that's why it says over here is in fact the verb heya in an older spelling. And that's why it says over here wa w a w. That's not hijack 101. The vav is a hijack 101 and the y is a hijack. The hey, the e is a hijack. You go from hey to e, you go from hey to e, that's a similar frequency. We're talking 440. When it was ha, wa, breath, wa, ha, h, a, ha, wa. We're getting back to the paleo. We're putting down the tent peg, getting the security, getting the foundation. We're connecting the ancient name for the creator because they no longer remember ha, wa. Let's go. And again, you got this link, you got this link. It's going to break more into the existence and all that, man. Love to AD. So you can get down with it. We're just talking about the OG. We're just talking about the natural by law, the gold. Wonderful presentation. So, um, according to the rules in Arabic, when you use ha as a suffix, you know, indicating the noun, it shows a specific masculine possessor. All right? And that's in the Arabic ruling, all right? In the format and function of that language. All right? In Hebrew, we're dealing with the pronunciation, right? Now, we're going to skip all of this pretty much because this is dealing with the modern Hebrew, all right? And as we dig right here, right, we're able to focus, hold on. Uh, 
on the ancient name, right? So we're dealing with the ancient. We don't need to, uh, we don't need to cross reference with the modern, right? When you dig on the modern Hebrew, it just puts you into more confusion, right? And they have to add things like the gamats and all these other different points to uh, pronunciate it, right? Which is where they get this matter uh, lectionist, right? This matter lectionist, right? We're going to dig on that in a little bit. Um, I just want you guys to see that um, basically the the sound ha is also a letter. All right? It's also a letter. Now, um, when we check out this tab, right, the modern lectionist, right, it's telling you in Latin, this is the mother, mothers of reading, right, excuse me, it's the mothers of reading. Hmm. Now, um, it's from the Latin, right? So we got to keep in mind, fam, that um, if it's not stemming from the Hebraic language in its most ancient raw form, it's 99.7% most likely hijacked. Bang. All right? And I'm going to tell you why. First of all, they're not going to give us full-blown access to the ancient Hebraic language, right? That's something we have to really go through and, and surf for, right? And while we're surfing, right, we have to really engulf yourself into the language itself in its pure form, right? That way, by practicing, right, by practicing, right, from the ancient standpoint, it becomes regular. And when it becomes regular, the wavelength then connects you back to the original creator of that language, right? So borrowing examples and definitions from other languages that basically were, were used or that were borrowed from the original ancient Hebrew for its creation in the first place. Alright? And we're gonna dig on this scripture real quick. It's simple, right? I just I just wanna remind, you know, my fam, right? Genesis eleven, verse one. It's Genesis eleven verse one. And the whole earth was of one language and one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime and had they for mortar. And they said, go to, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto the heaven and let us make a name lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And the Most High came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. And the Most High said, behold, the people is one and they all and they have all one language and this they begin to do and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do go to let us go down there and confound their language that they may not understand one another's speech so the most high scattered them abroad 
from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. Therefore is the name of it called Babel, because the Most High did there confound the language of all the earth, and from thence the Most High scattered them abroad the face of all the earth. Alright, and um, for those that, you know, <clears throat> dig in the Apocrypha, right, that do that Apocrypha reading, we understand and we know, right, that um, through the decisions of Eber and Peleg, right, that it was only the Hebrews that retained the language. I mean, yeah, fam, you got to understand, we, we retain our memories, our, our information, right? We had our documents, right? So all this hijack is really those trying to decipher and say what their perception is as they attempt to come back to the source. But see, as the children, right, as the keepers of that covenant, right, as the Most High allows us, as He chooses us, right, to awake, and we get our search on, right, and we pull out that shovel and we start to dig, right, and we come across this ancient, original form of the Hebraic language, right? His truth is revealed to us. But it takes time, fam. It takes patience. These things take patience. Mm. And as his children, it's up to us to dig through this, right? And to break it down. So, um... <clears throat> we read for ourselves, right? Now, it says, because the scripts used to write some Shemitic languages like vowel letters, unambiguous reading of a text might be difficult. Therefore, to indicate, to indicate vowels, mostly long consonant letters are used. For example, in the Hebrew construct state from Bet, meaning the house of the middle letter in the spelling acts as a vowel, but in corresponding absolute state form, by it, house. All right, so you see how they're showing you the example, the bet from the by it sound, right? It's really the by it, but they put the bet in there for them. All right. It says the earliest method of indicating some vowels in Hebrew writing was used was to use the consonant letters uh, Yah, Wah, He, and uh, Aleph, right, of the Hebrew alphabet to also write long vowels in some cases. Originally, these two letters were only at the end of words and I, or whatever this letter would be, right, were used mainly to write the original uh, diphthongs, right? As well as original vowel sequences. It says, if words can be written with or without the metris uh, lectionist, spellings that include the letters are called Mele, right? Hebrew or plene, Latin meaning full, and spellings without them are called haser or defective. So they don't even use your ancient Hebrew, fam. You just read it yourself. Hmm. They call your ancient language defective. Oh, you think this is a game? Play, play. 
You think I just decided to come talk to you for no reason, fam? Come on, bro. I got a high for y'all. Love, love. And um, due to due to the whole right that is Israel, this indigenous truth, right? I was able to uh, bully away, right, fam? And that love, right, that aha that the Most High gave to me, it made me tribal, fam. It made me tribal. Mm. So I do this because, yes, I have a heart, but I'm also tribal with this. Mm. Natural by law. Come on. The law, right? If you don't refer to the law naturally, what do you do? <laughs> Who are you? And I'm not talking about this man-made law. I'm talking about the law that governs man. Vibration. Shape. The law that man works with. In unison with. I mean, how else can man establish himself? Right? Naturally. As in the talk tone, right? indigenous, right? Occurring naturally, right? By way of the most high. All praises do. So, we just read, right, fam? They call your ancient Hebrew defective. Hmm. Now, um, here we see in Arabic, there is no such choice. So, in Arabic, they have to use this mater lectionist, right? They have no choice. So anything coming out of the Arabs' language is what? Heathen. It's heathenistic, right? Now, we could use it as a source to back up what is Hebrew, right? But it has to be non-hijacked. It has to be hijack-free. Because if you're bringing something of hijack origin that's not from the source, right? And you're trying to compare it back to it, right? Your messages is not going to be the same, fam. They just told you there's two different rules to this, right? It says usage in Hebrew. Most commonly, Yod indicates I or E, while Wa, see, indicates O or U. So we're talking about what, fam? Action. All right? So that Hawa is what? That action, right? It's the action of breathing. Mm. It's the action of being, being you. Because the breath is not yours, man. Right? The breath is not yours. So, why? It's simply indicating the action, right? And we say, hawa, right? And we're learning that. The ha is the breath, right? It is the breath. The wa, right, we see here is the feather, right? And we're digging on what? On action, right? It says the Aleph was not, sister, the Aleph was not systematically developed as a mater lectionist, right, in Hebrew, unlike in Aramaic and Arabic, but is occasionally used to indicate indicate a vowel. Hmm. Alright? 
So they created these little points for their pronunciation so that they can go ahead and incorporate your language according to their usage, wow. which is still a mistranslation, fam. So no doubt, man. It's right quick. And, you know, with this LF, and that's why when you go to this paleo and you see L here, then, you know, it became a ah, ah, I left. And that's why I went to L when you had it written, uh, who is it? The L, El Hawa. If one attempts to pronounce El Hawa, all right, so now you have some people say, uh, hey, uh, or uh, hi, uh, 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 but that uh is coming from the Aleph. <laughs> and the Aleph was originally the L. L, which just meant father, or you know, then you had the Baal and all that stuff. But originally, you're just talking about the OG, generic, strong power leader. So, father, leader, power, my power. So, when you had the El Hawa, you had the power, the strong, the strength, with the He, with the breath, with the Ha, with the Wa, with the foundation, the tent peg, the foundation. So, you're really just saying, my power that provides breath and foundation. My power that provides breath and foundation. That's your El Hawa. That's your El Hawa. He is the creator, the mold. Mold or hawa means to form, to mold. The imperative of the masculine singular liter literally is form. So when folks, you know what I'm saying, we got to dodge the hijack, dodge the static, even, you know what I mean, especially in this framework, you know what I mean, we're, we're providing information and, you know, it gets thrown around and, you know, people sit back and like, oh, okay, let me, I got something for that. <laughs> but, all right, when we dig and get to the root of it all, we're talking about the masculine. We're talking about the shaper, which is your vibration. And we're bringing in the feminine, the mother, when we deal with our framer and our shaper. Because you cannot, if this is, when you're married, you are one. Your shaper is married to your framer, to wisdom, with wisdom. You don't get wisdom unless you are in the vibration of the father's house. He who shapes you, molds you, pottery from clay. Domenico DeViso used their quiche names to refer to the power of the Old Testament. The most frequently mentioned, frequently mentioned gods involved in the creation of the world and its inhabitants. The ancient name, El Hawa. El Hawa. Your power that provides breath and foundation. Hawa. That's your framer, that's your shaper, that's your power. Your power provides your shaper. Your power provides the breath with wisdom. Let go. Your but power still provides your mother. Incorrect. Alright. I mean, they can't even tell you where it starts because they said that what well, is discreditable, right? Where did we see it? They said it's defective. If you don't use their rules, it's defective, right? So, um, that's for that, mm -hmm. right? Now, when we go back to the ha, right? We can dig on the significance of ha, right? Which is the breath, right? So, ha is of the breath, right? It says that um, Ha symbolizes the number five. When used at the beginning of Hebrew years, it means 5,000, mm. right? When attached to words, Ha may have three possible meanings, three possible, all right? So let's just dig on the possibility, mm. all right? And it says, it exists as a preposition, meaning the definite article, duh. 
or the relative pronouns that or who, as in a boy who reads, who, mm. right? Or that, right? See that ha? Huh? Says a prefix indicating that the sentence is a question. For example, you knew Hayadada? Did you know? Hmm. It says third, a suffix after place names indicating movement. Right? Action. I just said that, right? Action. Towards the given noun. So we're talking about movement, right? That was the whole point. Right? Where is it? And just right quick, that 5,000 years, somebody dig that up. Because if the ha is 5,000, then what is the wa? And if you add that 5,000 in a gematria to the wa, 5,000 plus whatever the wa represents. So somebody please dig up, man. Let me know what that wa, that value is, and add that to the 5,000. We know that in their Hebrew calendar, they say that we're in the year 5777. And they have all this prophecy for the year 5778, which is coming up in 2018. So we're right in the thick of things. And how does that relate to your 5000 representation in Gematria to the Ha? And what is that Wa? And if we add it up, do we get any drop? Right? We're talking about the movement. See? Indicating movement, right? Towards the given noun. So it's a form of action. In the ancient paleo, right? As the a paleo talk tongue, you should be able to feel this in the vibration and the frequency. Come on. Right? Now, if we're going to keep it real, there is no yeah. Right? No, yeah. Because even when you say it, right? Yeah. It's an aggression, right? That's what Sister uh, Yisrael Redemption said, right? The yeah is an aggression. So we would say what? Ha, right? Harushalayama. Harushalayama. Harushalayam, right? Harushalam. Wow. Now notice they pronounce wow. the ma at the end, right? That ah, giving it a suffix. This is still ha. Don't get it twisted, fam. Mm. Alright? Harushalayama. 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 Hawa. Alright? Even fake ass Judaism, right? They still use the Hashem, mm -hmm. right? Hmm. Father so this Shem. is the significance of Ha, right, fam? Which in its ancient form is that of the breath, right? From the ancient Hebraic hieroglyphs. This is what we're reading. We're not reading someone's uh, version of modern Yiddish, right? We're looking at the version of the Hebraic form that was translated and derived from the hieroglyph. Oh yeah, we're gonna continue to dig, man. Right? Cause we just digging off the simplicity and things, right? We don't have to borrow from other languages, man. And we don't need to know about other lands to understand that other lands were part of the hijack. All right. So, um, we're going to carry on, right? Now we're going to dig on why. Why itself is another letter, right? It's another letter. So when we're dealing on why, we're really just speaking the letter, right? Mm. We're just saying what? A, B, right? Without really saying A, B, we're just saying ha, wa, Come on. right? Ha, wa, right? Shout out to my fan. Come on. 
just let it sit in for a bit, man. And even when you dig on the Hashem, remember that meant strong power. So you look the power of Shem, Shem, the power of Shem, the power of Shem, his name, the power of his name, Hashem, the people, you know what I'm saying, that carry the power of his name. Who carries the power of his name originally? Adam. Adam named all the animals, all the all everything, right? So he carried the power to even name other things of the creator because he carried the image, the power. And Eve came from Adam. She came out of that rib. If we have, however you want to break it down metaphysically, however you want to break it down. But she comes from this molding, from this vibration. So the living, yeah, Hawa, you're going to find that connection with Eve. You're going to find that connection with Eve. But in finding it, you find that Eve, Hawa, right? A living being is from the base Hawa. So it's coming from a base Hawa, which is that he lived. So because he lived, she lived. Because Hawa, he lived, Eve lived. Hawa, so she's coming from this living. She's coming from the breath is being provided from the shaper, the vibration. The shaper, the vibration, modeling pottery from clay, the shaper, the vibration, vibration shapes you. What vibration are you in? What vibration are you edifying in? The framer puts it all together. Breath, let's go. Wow. You know, and this is just no, no disrespect, no, no nothing to anybody. This is just simply for informative purposes. For those who, you know, surfing the wave. Because when you surfing the wave, it's a beautiful thing. Beautiful thing. All right. So here we have the Arabic wa, right? Now it says, I'm sorry, before we go there, it says wa is the hook. Right? Was the hook. So, um, let's just do some digging, you know? Shout out to Let Us Find the Truth, right? Yay. Putting us up on, you know, continuing to keep our resources geared and fresh. Now, I don't know about you, but, you know, I kind of like this etymology online thing, you know? I don't take it to heart, but... It, I use their words against themselves, mm. right? So when we dig in on etymology, we dig on it because we want the facts of the origin and the development of the word, right? We want the analysis of the word to find its true origin, right? We properly want to study the true sense of a word, all right? The study of speaking of, right? The true sense, right? The true, real, actual. This is what we're doing this for. Right? Now, by all means, if there's a pure language out there that somebody has access to that's non-hijack free, that requires no digging and spitting out the bones, let me know if you're willing to share. See, you know, these days we weren't going to be so fortunate if we, you know, relied on man. Hmm. So what did the most high tell us? Let's dig, right? Let's dig, man. Let's 